The movie begins with the idea that human evolution is at a crossroads. The majority of science fiction theories forecast a highly sophisticated and intelligent human race in the future. However, since humans are already at the top of the food chain, their evolutionary trajectory is negatively impacted. Humans get more stupid over time. Under these circumstances, Corporal Joe Bowers, a librarian with the United States Army, receives a proposal from his superiors to participate in a significant experiment. Joe feels irritated that he must obey the orders, even though he had intended to remain a librarian until retirement. Following that, we are brought to a secret meeting with several senior military officers. The other officers hear General Collins' presentation of his ideas. He claims that scientists have created a human hibernation capsule that will allow them to remain alive indefinitely. It's so that when things get tough, people may bring back their best men and preserve them. Since Joe doesn't have any family and is the most typical man in the military, they have decided to use him as the first test subject. In a similar vein, they needed a woman for the experiment as well, but they weren't the right fit in the military. Collins ends up selecting Rita, a prostitute. He makes everyone uncomfortable in the room by showing the cops photos of him and Rita's boss upgrade having parties together. He concludes by stating that the experiment will run for a year and that the volunteers will be placed into the pods tomorrow. The authorities in the room aren't permitted to divulge any details about the highly classified experiment to anybody. Joe awaits in a waiting area with Rita the next day. After introducing himself, Joe queries Rita about her job field. Rita claims to be a painter in order to hide the fact that she is a prostitute. After that, they are placed Placed in two human hibernation pods, Rita panics and attempts to stand up. But Joe reassures her that the scientists are competent. He assures her that everything would be well because they will only be there for a year. The two are finally trapped within the pods. But when Officer Collins is apprehended in an alleged prostitution ring, things start to go bad. In addition to him, Upgrade is taken into custody for overseeing a prostitution organization. As a result, no one is left to take care of the hibernation pods. The military base closes, and the structure housing the pods is raised due to a scandal. As the years go on, Rita and Joe remain dormant in the pod. Things are dire for the two, but they are far worse for all of humanity. The rate at which human stupidity is evolving is startling. Average intellect is represented by a declining curve over time. Some think that technology and genetic engineering can stop this tendency in evolution. But the world's best scientists are busy doing dumb experiments like attempting to extend erections and reverse hair loss. Meanwhile, until the year 2025, the population grew and intellect kept declining. Even after all these years, basic human concerns like rubbish disposal remain unsolved. Thus, the trash has been piled for generations without any kind of design. This is what caused the 2505 Great Garbage Avalanche. And one day Joe's hibernation pod ends up in a random house due to a large rubbish avalanche. Joe emerges from the pod disoriented and lightheaded. Frito Pendijo is the name of the resident of the home. Frito keeps watching unusual TV shows while blatantly ignoring a mound of trash and a visitor in his home. The entire show is a guy getting his balls kicked. He stands only to implore Joe to keep quiet. We see that his couch includes a toilet as well, saving him from having to get up frequently. Joe is then thrown out of the window by him. Joe thinks that a lot has changed in a year, and the outside world is bewildering. However, he is unaware that he has stepped into the year 2025. He notices a bunch of folks grunting and speaking in slang at the side of the road. Although Joe can understand them, they call him derogatory names and shoo him away when he speaks in his typical manner. Joe, who is confused and experiencing dizziness, chooses to visit a neighboring hospital. He approaches the receptionist there and introduces himself as an army veteran. The woman just punches one of the numerous buttons on her desk, not understanding anything at all. Joe hears a voice instructing him to go to the diagnostic section on the right. Bewildered, he approaches a water fountain to get some water. Water. But what comes out is an energy drink known as the Brondo. When Joe asks a bystander where he can drink water, the guy laughs at Joe for wanting to drink something that people use in restrooms. It is discovered that water is only used in toilets, and that everyone in the world utilizes Brondo for daily activities drinking and bathing. After that, he proceeds to the diagnostic section and is required to insert plugs into his ear, mouth, and anus. The medical practitioner misplaces the plugs he has previously placed in specific areas. After finishing the process, a disgruntled Joe is sent to a doctor. 
He reads the year 2025 scribbled on a magazine while he waits, but he brushes it off as a typo. When the doctor shows up, he uses terms like kick-ass to respond to all of Joe's inquiries concerning his health. In addition, he calls Joe retarded and demands a $5 billion payment from him. Joe suddenly discovers that the band note has 2025 inscribed on it. It takes him a long time to realize that he has been inside the pod for 500 years. Joe walks to the window, almost not believing it, and is shocked to see the state of the city. Some of the buildings are being kept together by ropes, while others are crumbling upon one another. The city is also overflowing with trash. As everything is going on, the doctor becomes really alarmed because Joe does not have a citizen tattoo on his wrist. When the doctor summons the police on Joe, because he hasn't paid his hospital fees, Joe panics and flees the hospital. A massive dust bowl has destroyed all food supplies. The economy is in complete disarray, and the top film in the country is called Ass. He watches the Oscar-winning film, only to spend the next 90 minutes staring at someone's ass. At night, he is arrested for being unscannable and taken to a court. There, he is assigned a lawyer who just so happens to be Joe's first acquaintance from 2025, Frito Pendijo. Everyone in the court laughs as Frito makes fun of him. The court and attorneys simply laugh at Joe when he makes a reasonable argument and explains why he cannot be scanned. Finally, the judge finds him guilty and gives him a jail term. Rita emerges from the pod at the same time and tries to get in touch with her boyfriend and management. She tries, but the phone keeps asking for 2000 bucks before connecting her with him. At that moment, moment, a guy approaches her, whom she dupes into giving her his money. Joe is escorted to an automated tattoo parlor at the same moment, where the populace receives scanning tattoos for identification. Joe begins to explain that he is unsure of what is happening when the machine asks him for his name. As a result, the machine prints his name on his wrist, with the response, not sure. His surroundings also begin to refer to him as not sure. After that, he takes an amplitude and IQ exam, during which he is tested on fundamental addition. Joe correctly answers each question, and he's shocked to learn that many around him are unable to recognize shapes. He is then brought to the prison after that. At last, he starts to see how foolish everyone is in today's world. He then tells the guard that he is expected to be released from custody today. The foolish guard lets him go, but when the alarms go off, the police discover that a convict has escaped, and they pursue him through the streets. Joe manages to escape from them and returns to Frito's house. He asks Frito for assistance in obtaining a time machine, since he thinks that one has been made in the last 500 years. Frito Frito is not in favor of aiding Joe, but Joe connives to get him to agree by promising to pay him $8 billion. Frito eventually admits that he is aware of the location of the time machine. The cops knock on the door at that very moment, searching for Joe. The two drive to the museum after jumping out of the window. On their way, they meet Rita, who is still scamming the same guy. Rita, who is still unaware that Upgradiad has already passed away, worries that he may return seeking for the money she owes him as she gets into the car. Joe's wrist gets scanned by something outside the car as they are driving, alerting the cops to his whereabouts. They exit the car when the battery runs out. The police then move in on the car and open fire. Soon, a bunch of people join and begin fighting each other. Rita, Joe, and Frito flee in the hopes of reaching the time machine. After that, Joe drives the two to Costco, which is now the hub of all trades. He even says he went to Costco to study law. Rita uses the restroom while they wait for the metro. Joe's wrist is inadvertently scanned, alerting every everyone to the presence of a criminal. When the metro arrives, Frito boards it. But while Joe waits for Rita, the cops arrest him. Instead of being hauled to prison, he is brought to the White House this time. There, President Camacho and his secretaries are met by a bewildered Joe. Making fun of him, Camacho remarks that he assumed Joe's head would be larger due to his intelligence. It turns out that the IQ test Joe took in the prison surprised everyone because he had the highest they had ever seen. Joe is therefore appointed as the new Secretary of the Interior by the President due to his intelligence. They also proclaim Joe to be the world's brightest man, which surprises Joe. President declares that Mr. Not Sure, their new interior secretary, would handle the issues of food scarcity and dust storm. In addition, if Joe finds the solution, he will waive Joe's prison sentence. Following that, the secretaries call a cabinet meeting and ask Joe to make a thought-provoking statement. Joe gives them the impression that he is intelligent by using some strange, difficult terms. Then Joe asks Frito to draw a map of the location of the time machine until he distracts the secretaries. Afterwards, he leads them to a field meant for growing crops. He also requests that Rita be brought over, as she may be able to assist them with the crops. 
Now that everyone has gathered at the field, Frito gives Joe the map in secret. Rita gets there at the same moment. Joe pulls her aside with the intention of using the map to flee. But when he realizes that Frito's map is simply a line, his plan falls apart. Joe then discovers that the energy drink Brondo has been used to irrigate the crops. He holds a cabinet meeting to start using water instead of Brondo. His suggestion is deemed horrible by the secretaries. He informs them that he can communicate with the plants and that they desire water, rather than trying to reason with them. Joe is unaware that the energy drink destroyed plants and created dust storms by causing salt to accumulate on top of the soil. He is genuinely resolving their issues as a result. Everything goes according to plan for a few days. However, as manufacturing declines, Brondo's energy drink inventories eventually drop to zero. As a result, half of the population is jobless. Outside the White House, they riot. The news reports that Joe has been charged for creating jobless situations and has been found guilty. He is ordered to spend one night in rehabilitation. Rehabilitating someone in the new world means chasing them down in an arena with a big truck as the crowd applauds the vehicle. The criminal's death usually marks the end of their rehabilitation. As Rita regretfully makes her way back to the White House and gets ready to head to the time machine with Frito, Joe is brought to the arena. National television broadcasts the rehabilitation. Joe is driving about in a modest automobile when a gigantic, deadly truck chases him. Rita sees a rose bush sprouting outdoors at that very moment. She asks Frito to drive her to the arena after realizing that Joe's suggestion to water the plants had been successful. She intends to show the crops on TV in an effort to have Joe's penalty lifted. Joe is still attempting to escape the death vehicle in the meanwhile. Rita arrives on schedule, bribing a cameraman to accompany Frito and record the crops as they grow. Following that, she enters the monitoring room and seizes control of the control panel. When Frito arrives at the field, he starts filming the crops. The video is shown on the big screen. When President Camacho realizes this, the audience erupts in joy as he pardons Joe's penalty and prevents Joe from being executed. Everyone is currently in the White House for a fraternity party. Rita admits that she prefers the future and doesn't want to go back home. Despite his amazement, Joe does not make her accompany him. As the two bid each other farewell for the last time, the president summons Joe to the platform and names him the vice president. Joe agrees to stay in 2025, as everyone looks at him with hope in their eyes. Subsequently, someone describes the time machine as an absurd ride. It is eventually discovered that the time machine is merely a kid's ride when Frito brings a bewildered Joe to it. A few months later, the scene is cut to Rita being the first lady and Joe becoming the president of the United States. A new period began under his direction, and people began to believe that intelligent people might exist once more. He even has three children with Rita, who are regarded to be the world's smartest children. 